Hello and welcome to another episode of Mr. Kong Has Problems. Tonight in grade 5 we are working on module 4, lesson number 21. And in lesson 21 we are explaining the size of the product and relating fractions and decimal equivalents to multiplying fractions by 1. So this is a particular kind of way of dealing with fractions and decimals that will sort of help us as we've been working this week um, in relating fractions to decimals. Um, we're going to see what we mean when we go to a couple of our questions here. Let's take a look at question number 1. Question number 1 Directions are really straightforward, fill in the blanks. And it, let's just take a look at 1a. 1a has been partially done for us. Let's see what they're doing here. 1 third times 1. So what do they do? 1 third times 3 over 3, 3 thirds. Oh, I see. So that's like another way that you could describe 1. 1 is the same as 3 thirds, right? They're equivalent. Oh, I see. And they're trying to generate in this case, it looks like they're trying to get us into ninths. So they say one third times three thirds. And I can see in the denominator they did, they did three times three equals nine. So I bet they'll need us to multiply the numerator. That's one times three is three. Oh, well that makes sense, right? I mean, we've done this kind of equivalent fractions work before. We, we know that one third is the same as three ninths. Interesting. Well, let's take a look at one C. 1c is very similar, but they've done even less for us. The original fraction is 5 halves times 1, 5 halves times something, and in the final version, we've got 25 in the numerator. Well, how could we get from 5 to 25? What would we have to multiply by? It's almost like a mystery, right? 5 times what is 25? Oh, well, 5 times 5 is 25. So if we multiplied the numerator by 5, hey, we would have to be multiplying by 5 fifths because we multiplied by 1, right? 5 halves times 1, so it is the same as 5 halves times 5 fifths, is the same as 5 times 5 is 25, 2 times 5 is 10, there we go, same as 25 tenths. Awesome. Well, these are really interesting kinds of problems. They're almost like puzzles more than they're regular math problems. Let's take a look at some other problems. In that first set of problems, they kind of just gave us numbers that we were shooting for when we tried to create equivalent fractions, but there wasn't really a purpose to it. I mean, we sort of tried to find the missing parts, right? And we figured out what the fractions were equivalent to. But in this next set of problems, we're going to have a focus, right? This time we're going to express each fraction as an equivalent decimal. The first one is partially done for you. Well, decimals, huh? So I think that means we need to have, we need to be working to find either tenths, or hundreds or thousands or something like that, right? It's not enough for us to just create any random old decimal fraction or any old random fraction. We need to find a fraction that has a 10 in the denominator or a hundred in the denominator or a thousand in the denominator so that we can then rewrite that fraction as a decimal fraction, okay? Let me show, show you uh, 2a together and we'll see how that looks. So it looks like they started off with three fourths and they said, hey, how can we get fourths into a decimal fraction. And so it looks like they said, hey, eventually, now go a few steps here down to the right, eventually we need to get to a point where we've expressed this fraction with a hundred in the denominator. And so then they kind of worked back from there and they said, well, what would we need to multiply four by to get to a hundred? And it turns out that would be 25, right? And if they're going to multiply the uh, denominator by 25, they need to multiply the numerator by 25. So three times 25, three times 25, over four times 25, that gives us the 100 we need in the denominator, and what would it be in the numerator? Let's see, three times 25, let's see, we'll skip count by 25, 25, 50, 75, I think, right? 75, 75 would be our numerator. And now that we have 75 hundredths, well, we can express that as a decimal. There's 75 hundredths, right? Beautiful. So let's try to do the same thing for 2D. 2D, we're trying to get fifths, into a decimal, into a denominator like 10 or 100 or 1,000, I'm thinking we could get fifths into tenths. So I'm going to just put our target out here saying, hey, let's get to tenths, right? What would we need to multiply the 5 by to get to 10? What would be the mystery number here? 5 times what is 10? Oh, let's see, I think that would be 2. Now, if we multiplied the denominator by 2, we'd need to multiply the numerator by 2. That way, we haven't really changed the value of 3 fifths. We've just created a new equivalent fraction that happens to have tenths in it. So see, 2 times 3 in the numerator, I'm sorry, 3 times 2 in the numerator would be 6, and that gives us 6 tenths, an equivalent fraction to 3 fifths. And you know what? 6 tenths, we can express 
as directed as a decimal, six tenths. Awesome. Let's take a look at one problem tonight. Oh, this is a story problem, so we're going to have to use our read, draw, and write strategy. Let's do the reading. Elise has three-fourths of a dollar. She buys a stamp that costs 44 cents. Change both numbers into decimals and tell how much money Elise has after paying for the stamp. Wow. Okay, so she starts off with three-fourths of a dollar. Three-fourths of a dollar. Okay. So let's see. Well, let's see. Let's do our drawing here. She started off with a hole that was three-fourths of a dollar. That's the hole. And then she spent some chunk of it. 44 cents, right? And then the question is, how much is left over? Does that sound about right? Okay, there's our drawing part. Sorry, I almost skipped over that. So first we have to exchange, we have to make everything into decimals. How are we going to make three-fourths into a decimal? Well, let's see. I'm going to kind of use the strategies that we've been using here, which is that we need to multiply it times some fraction to create a decimal. Let's see, the decimal, we would have 100 in the denominator, right? Um, especially when we're working with money, hundreds is going to be super helpful. So let's see, what number would we need to multiply 4 by to get to 100? So here's a little mystery. What could that number be? I'm thinking it might be 25, right? 4 times 25 would be 100. So let's see, 25. Yeah, that would work. So what do we need to multiply the numerator by then? Well, the same thing, right? We need to make sure that we're not really changing the value of 3 fourths. We're just changing the fraction into a new equivalent fraction. 3 times 25 is 75. And so we can say that Elise had 75 hundredths of a dollar, or 0 0.75. Hey, we've done the first part, right? We've changed the first number into a decimal. Let's see, how about 44 cents? 44 cents. Can we change that into a decimal? Oh, sure. 44 cents is the same as 44 parts of a dollar, right? 44 parts of a dollar, 44 hundredths, or 0 0.44. Awesome. Okay, so she started with 0 0.75, and then she spent 0 0.44. How much does she have left? Well, this is just subtraction now, right? We could just do simple subtraction. We could do 0 0.75 minus 0 0.44, and do our subtraction. Let's see. 5 hundredths minus 4 hundredths is 1 hundredth. 7 tenths minus 4 tenths is 3 tenths, and we don't have any holes left, so it looks like 31 cents. So it looks like that's our missing piece, 31 cents. Um, oh, but we need to do our right strategy. So I think we would say she has 0 0.31 dollars left. Awesome. That's it for tonight's homework. Thanks so much for joining me. I'll see you again next time. Take care.